Hello world, it's Craig. The weather is keeping me indoors today, so I wanted to put out another video just in case you were one of the subscribers starting to wonder if something happened to me. And I'm alive and well, thank you. A few videos ago in video number 101, I introduced this MCS85 minimum system. As discussed in that video, Intel pushed out the MCS85 minimum system design to emphasize that with the 8085, the days of having to design around the overly complex 8080 or the completely inept 8008 were behind us and there were brighter days ahead. Now the trainer for the 8085 was the Intel's uh, SDK85, System Design Kit 85. And it has an 8085 CPU, has room for a pair of 8155 RAM chips. Each of them give you 256 bytes of RAM plus uh, uh, several pins of I.O. and an, an internal timer. Then there's a pair of ROM sockets. Each of them offer 2K of ROM plus more I.O. And these were 8355s or the 8755s in this case for the EEPROM. There's also the 8279 keypad and display controller and that's used to uh, simplify the interface. This is a scanned display and a scanned keyboard and that simplifies the, simplifies the interface to the uh, 8085. There's also drivers for a current loop up here for a teletype. And on this board, I've modified these. I'm just giving it plus or minus 12 and I have a 1488-1489 pair for the RS-232 interface. The board has a bus expansion, drivers and latches, and then all of the bus signals come out, all of the ports come out, and then there's a nice playground over here with connectors for uh, you know, the user to, to put out here whatever they want in terms of wire wrapping. While programming with only the 512 bytes of RAM can be tight, the SDK85 has always been my favorite 8085 trainer. I wire wrapped one back in 81 or 82, but Unfortunately, that homemade one has long since gone missing. However, I do have a couple of these that I picked up in the mid 80s that you know I still like to play with because it is just it brings back some good memories. I thought somebody else out there might have always either wanted an SDK 85 or they got fond memories of an 8085 or maybe they just like uh, the 8085. So I decided to create an updated version or a modified version of the SDK 85, and this is the SDK 85 Plus board. I introduced this SDK85 Plus board in the video where I talked about this minimum system. And at that time, I introduced it so that you know people wouldn't start asking for a lot of features in this minimum system because I wanted to keep this, uh, you know, remain faithful to the Intel published minimum system. And I wanted this to be the bigger brother that mimics the functionality of the SDK85. There are a couple of improvements from the SDK85. So like the minimum MCS85 system, which is really tight on RAM because it only has 256 bytes of RAM. So I added in another member of the MCS85 family, which is this 8185 1K RAM, which also latches the address. So it was designed to interface directly with the 8085. But on the MC or on the SDK85 version, I added two of these. So we have 2K of RAM here. We have half a K of RAM with these two 8155s. So two and a half K of RAM. And that's a, that's a reasonable amount of RAM to have on this little platform. If you want more RAM or EEPROM, this platform has also got two universal sites. Right now I have a 6264 RAM down here and I've been running a 2764 EEPROM up there. But if you want, you could put in a double EEPROM or you could be, uh, you know, two EEPROMs or whatever you want to add on those universal sites. I did drop the current loop uh, interface since I doubt there's a lot of teletype users out there and you know truth be told teletypes they always sound like a lot more fun than they really are to use so uh, I put in a max 232 you don't have to provide the plus and minus 12 on this just the 5 volts does it and then we have a serial port on this 9 pin uh, D connector out here I wanted to make this board smaller so I got rid of all of the expansion drivers and, and the playground out here and then I further divided this into a CPU board and a keypad display board now the CPU board, you can run this by itself. This, this functions as a single board computer. Uh, it just doesn't have the keypad and display. If you want to use the keypad and display, and let me take off this little ZIF socket that I use when I'm programming. So this guy goes on standoffs over the top of this. And uh, you know then you can you have access to your ZIF socket here and you have your, your keypad and, and uh, display. So with this keypad and display, it brings us 
uh, 12 characters of seven segment displays, and that's twice as many as the original SDK. The original SDK, we've got just four address and two data, so here we've got 12 digits to play with. Now this display part, actually the way it's designed is, it's designed, you can, you can break this off and put a little ribbon cable in here and then put hinges on this so that you can tip this up to make it a little bit easier to, uh, to read the display. So we'll see how that all goes once I get into building this to see if what I messed up on that. Now the keypad also brings out, uh, there's 24 scanned keys. So just like on the SDK, we've got the original, we've got 16 hexadecimal keys, and then these are scanned, the go, examine, register, these, these specific function keys, they're also part of the keyboard scan that the 8279 does. Then there's also some hardwired keys, like on this one, the reset and the vector interrupt are hardwired. So on this version, we have uh, 24 scan keys, and then we have five keys that are hardware, hardwired. So there's reset, the vector interrupt, and then I have a couple of the other interrupts come out here that, that uh, we can use for some other function. As you can see, uh, you know, I haven't even started testing this keyboard uh, display. I haven't even, I barely started building it. I just put these on to see if these, uh, how these cherry keys fit. So who knows what problems are lurking in this display board and if we have more bad weather then i'll get back uh, maybe this summer but you know this could be a, a fall project now in this video i'm only going to be talking about the sdk 85 plus board uh, since that's all that i have built and and have tested to do the testing to this board i brought over the same resident monitor that I am running in this minimum system. So if you go back and you look at that video, you see the resident monitor that's in it. That's exactly what I have running in this. I just ported it over because the addresses are a little bit different. Now, while I'm thinking about it, you know, programmers for the 8755 for either of these boards, they're not overly common. And in that video, I mentioned that there was the Matt Millman's 8755 programming shield for the Arduino. And I had some boards for that that I, I made. I have them on Tendi, and these are just downloaded from his site. This one I have gotten around to populating it, but I haven't programmed it. it looks like I have a couple of chips here I have to put in. Haven't programmed or tested this, obviously. This is the adapter. So this is the shield for the 8748 uh, microcontroller, and then a little adapter for the 8755. These are available. You can just download the files from his site and the software, or there's other people that sell these, or I have some on my Tindy site if you uh, uh, want those, those bare boards. So that's one option for programming the 8755. Uh, my preferred option is I use uh, these Needham EMP20s. These are really nice for the vintage uh, chips you have a, a little card that you slide in here and that's a personality module that tells you you know how uh, how tells it how to program what you have uh, in the socket these do have to hang on a parallel port and I'm running this on a Windows uh, 95 machine that I have here and it just works great these are nice programmers I've seen these for as cheap as hundred dollars on eBay but you know sometimes they're listed for five hundred dollars so you know you just gotta uh, keep your eyes out and if it doesn't have these modules, there are people that are have reproduced these modules, and you can uh, either get the, the modules for a reasonable price, or you can get the design files for those. So the monitor that I'm running in this is not the same as the SDK resident monitor. I'll have to port that over this fall when I get back to this project. The monitor that I have in this now is just the one that's in the minimum system. And I'm going to have to, uh, well, I've, I've used that to test that I, you know, this is working at a basic level. I have the serial port running. I have talked to all the memory processors running, of course. Uh, I've tried a few EEPROMs in this, a few combinations of this. I don't think, I know I have not tried a double EEPROM in that socket. But uh, I know that this is working, you know, reasonably well. But I'm going to wait to publish the schematic for this board until after I've built and tested the keypad display board. Uh, but if you're an early adopter and you're interested in playing with this first version, I can send you the build files. But first we need to talk about uh, mistakes, limitations, and potential issues with this board. You know, it, it works at the base function, or functionality is there, uh, you know, for the testing that I've done, but there's bound to be mistakes in this that I haven't found. And there is at least one mistake in this version. I have uh, you know little jumpers, and I do have done this on all my boards, but I messed up the jumpers for these universal sites. You know, you have to select what kind of a chip you have in there. 
and I brought out the, the pin out incorrectly on these jumpers. And so what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to be able to put a jumper on any two adjacent pins for the different devices. But I goobered this up, and so you have to wire wrap uh, these jumpers for, uh, you know, at least some of these chips you have to wire wrap instead of using the, the jumper on those. So there is that mistake. And uh, there is the ability with this little jumper here, this is JP12, that we can do a little refinement on how these universal sockets are mapped. But overall, the bottom 16K of this memory map always has the 8755s, the 8155s, the 8185s, and the 8279. So those are always in the bottom 16K, and then these are above it. And I have kind of toyed with the idea of putting the jumper in here so that we could boot from the ZIF socket or maybe either one of these. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's worthwhile. So if you have an opinion on that, you know, let me know. As usual for the first version of this board, there's some things that I will change, and I'm not sure that this board will even work with the keypad display uh, board. You know, maybe that I forgot a signal here, and so it might be that I have to make changes to this in order to get this to work. So there's a distinct possibility that there's some sort of interface problem between these two boards. And, you know, if you do adopt this and you, you build one of these CPU boards, it may be incompatible with the final version of the keypad display board. So with those warnings, as I mentioned earlier, it seems to be functional at the base level. So I will send you the build files if you want to have some of these made. And I also have a few of the extra boards, you know, from this first batch that I made. And as usual, uh, you know, I, I plan to give them away with the standard conditions that I would hope that you would be able to give me some feedback on this board if you find any mistakes on it. And second is that, you know, you would at least be willing to pay the postage to ship it to you. So if you want one of these CPU boards, leave a comment on the video uh, below to, to grab your place in the queue and then email me so we can finish up the details with your mailing address and you can PayPal me to reimburse me the postage cost. And then when I have the final SDK resident monitor ported over to this board, I can program 8755s for you with the monitor, but during this early stage where I'm you know always modifying the monitor and changing it, you really need to be able to program 8755s in-house in order to utilize, you know, really to get anything out of this board. Because I'm changing this monitor when I'm working on this. I'm changing this on a daily basis. All right, that's it for this video. The next time I'm stuck indoors, I plan on finishing up the keyboard and display uh, board. And then I need to expand the existing minimum monitor to include the 8279 on this. And then, of course, I need to port the SDK monitor over to this platform. So I'll make an updated video sometime. Uh, when Maybe when I get the next thing working, I'll make an updated video. But until then, thanks for watching, and I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.